Hi everyone, welcome back to part two in this series of videos on the uh, workflow for Facebook 360, particularly in Reaper. Uh, we're, today we're going to go into a little bit more detail about using Reaper, setting up your session, talking a little bit about routing and that sort of stuff, and some of the cool, unique features that are available within Reaper itself. Now you should have everything downloaded. Um, if you are unsure about what you need, to work along with this project, then do go back to part one where we go over the tools that you need and where to find them uh, and download them from. So just go back, do that, get those installed and then come back and start this video. So yeah, as I say, we're gonna go over Reaper today. Uh, I particularly want to go over some important points that are specific to this session, but also to working within Reaper as a whole. I want to go over some of the advantages of Reaper and some of the powerful features that it has that other doors might or might not have. Uh, we want to go over routing, multi-channel options, custom actions, customization. Um, we're going to go over the tracks as well as looping and locators and just kind of the general process of using Reaper and getting a bit more comfortable within this new door. Right, so let's go over to screen sharing and see what we've got going on over here. So off into the oblivion and over to Reaper. So once you've got everything installed, you should open up Reaper and you should be greeted with something similar to this. Now mine may look slightly different to yours because Reaper is incredibly customizable and I've made Reaper work for me. For instance, you'll see that I have a custom uh, toolbar up here that I've created some extra buttons for so I can easily switch between different formats and that sort of stuff. Um, but it should be pretty similar to what you're going to see when you open up. So the first thing that I want to go through is kind of how to create tracks, how to route tracks, all that kind of basic stuff that's really important for just organizing your and structuring your session. Uh, but we're going to do it in the context of creating the session for Facebook 360. So you can work along with me or you can just open up the template session that you've been sent. It's the same structure, um, but it could be beneficial to just work along with me and kind of get a bit more comfortable with Reaper. So first things first, how do we create tracks? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, we can either go Command T as a shortcut or we can go up to track, insert new track, or we can just double click and the track appears. That's probably the quickest and easiest way to do it. Just double click and you can create as many tracks as you want. Now you notice that no dialogue popped up asking us what kind of track that we want to make, as you might expect from using something like, I don't know, like Logic um, or Ableton, um, we generally have to select which kind of track we want to make, whether it's an audio track, an instrument track, a MIDI track, those sorts of things. In Reaper, every track works exactly the same. Every track can hold MIDI, audio, multi-channel audio, anything from mono all the way up to 64 channels. It can all be put onto any of the tracks in Reaper. Not only that, but they can also be mixed and matched. So I could have a track that has MIDI on it, as well as a mono, source as well as a third order ambisonic source as well as a 64 channel uh crazy mix i don't know uh but the point is that we can do that within reaper and we don't really have to think about it it just does it for us so let's have a little bit of a look at how to structure our session for facebook 360 and then we can go into a little bit of routing and we can kind of get our head around the capabilities of Reaper in terms of channel count and that sort of stuff. So first we're going to create three new tracks and these are gonna be our master tracks. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just double click in this window three times and that's created three new tracks for us. So the first track at the top, we need to name our 3D master, okay? Second track, control track. And our third track is HL master, which stands for headlock master. So let's go through what these are actually needed for. We have our 3D master. Now this is where all of our spatialized sound is going to be routed to. You can see it as a sort of aux channel. Um, so everything is going to be routed through here before it goes through to anywhere else. So anywhere near our master bus or any other channel is going to go through our 3D master. Only spatialized stuff. 
Now, this is interesting because there's a concept within VR and 360 video called headlocked audio, and that's what this channel is meant for here. This is the equivalent of our 3D master bus, but this is for headlocked audio. Now, headlocked audio is audio that works in stereo, but doesn't move with the rest of the audio. It's not spatialized. So people use this for like internal dialogue or maybe music, uh, rarely for effects, uh, often things that are going on inside a character's head or that sort of stuff, non-diegetic non sound will be uh, fed through our headlock master. And we will export both of these differently and mux them in together later, which we'll go into more detail on. But you just need to know that you have two separate master channels, one for spatialized audio and one for headlocked stereo audio. And then our control channel here is, there's a plugin within the Facebook uh, suite that is called the control plugin. Um, and that's kind of the final stage for our spatialized audio. So it can be converted into the right format for our video and that sort of stuff when we come to exporting. So all of our spatialized audio is going to end up being routed through our 3D master. And then our 3D master is going to be routed through our control track, which is then going to be where we export from. So the control track is really just kind of providing the final stage that gives the file the data so that it knows how to react when people are turning their head. All that live on the fly control that happens at the consumer's end is all dictated by the control channel. Okay, so we've created our 3D master track, we've created our control track, and we've created our headlock master audio track. We now need to create tracks to work with. Okay, so I'm going to create two, two more tracks here, and I'm gonna call them SPAT1 and SPAT2. So these are our spatialized tracks. These are tracks that we're gonna bring audio on and work to manipulate them within the spatial domain. Now, normally when we're routing tracks within a door, we have to route the output to a bus and then the output of that bus into a channel. And this kind of traditional busting system was all based around analog workflows, but this is something that we don't really need to think about anymore with Reaper. Reaper works with sort of a child and parent structure. So, it's more like a traditional file system within a computer almost, but you can think of it similar to Logix stack tracks or Ableton's groups really in operation. Uh, but it's really quick and easy to order, organize your session in here and keep things tidy by using this system. So what we're going to do is we're gonna select both of our spat tracks by holding shift and just clicking on the bottom one so that these two are selected. And then I'm gonna drag these up until I see this kind of faded white line being moved inside this folder. And if I drop it, you can see that these are now grouped within this folder. And I can collapse this folder to tidy up the session or whatever, or expand it so that I can work on things. But you, I'll also point out that the routing has automatically been changed. So down here in the mixer, you can see these three slashes on the channels, and this is where you open up the routing panel. So if I open this up, we can see that it's automatically sending parent send to track one 3D master. We haven't had to route anything through a bus, it's just sending directly to that channel without us having to do anything. So while we're in here, I want to kind of show you how we need to change the settings of these channels so that it works with ambisonic audio. So Facebook's 360 plugins output in third order ambisonics. That's 16 channels of audio. So we need to make sure that all of the channels that we're using for spatialized uh, sound are set up to deal with 16 channel audio. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to track channels down here and I'm just going to select this drop down menu and select 16. So now you'll see that it's expanded down here in the mixer. This channel is ready to handle 16 channels of audio. Now the audio that we're putting on it isn't necessarily going to be 16 channels. It's going to be mono or it's going to be an ambisonic recording or maybe stereo or maybe some other type of format like quad or 5.1, but it's not going to be necessarily a third order ambisonic file. But Facebook's encoder plugins will upmix that to third order ambisonics to later be decoded. So we get a higher resolution of sound so that we can, or spatialized information so that we can manipulate that and have a more immersive experience in our videos. So I'm just going to do that for both of our spatialized tracks. I'm going to open up the routing and I'm going to change the track channels to 16 on there. 
And I'm also going to do that for the 3D master channel and the control channel. So all of these channels are now set up to deal with third order ambisonic 16 channel audio. So there's one more thing that I need to do with the spatialized audio uh, channels, and that's to route the 3D master not to the master channel, the final master channel, but to the control channel. Okay, so to do that, we come over to routing here, and this opens up this window again, and we select or we deselect, sorry, the master send on 3D master, okay? Now this is stopping the 3D master bus sending out to our final door master, which currently is invisible. But if I just bring that up here, so, uh, so we can see the master channel here, and this is where the 3D master is currently sending to, but we want to turn that off, okay? So we deselect this, okay? So there's no tick in it. Now we want to send the output of this to the control channel, which is down here. So to do that, we come to the send section down here, we go add new send, and we go control. So at the moment, this is only set up to send channels one and two, so a stereo pair to the control uh, channel, but we want it to send all 16 channels, so it's sending full third order ambisonics. So what we're going to do is under audio here, we're just going to select this drop down menu, go to multi-channel source, 16 channels, one to 16. And that's now sending all 16 channels from the 3D master channel over to the control channel. It's important to keep these buses configured how they are, um, just so when we come to export, things are a little bit clearer and we can create a separate ambisonic file for our spatialized audio and a separate stereo file for our headlocked audio. But we'll go into that in more detail when we come to exporting. Uh, and just to quickly show you how uh, we're going to set up the headlocked audio uh, in here. Uh, we're not actually going to use headlocked audio in this project, but I think it's important that you actually just see how things are routed. It's a very quick process. Uh, so I'm just going to create two more channels here. And again, we're going to do the same as we did before, but we're going to call it HL1 and HL2. So that's headlock one, headlock two. I'm going to select the top one, hold shift, select the bottom one and just drag that up into this folder up here. And now that's all automatically routed how I need it to be routed. The headlock master can remain routed to the main master. It's fine, don't worry about it. Uh, just leave it as it is and we'll have a nice, easy to work with stereo file.